Hi, Brian White is filling in for Buck Lavasser. Merry Christmas, everyone. Well, it's late December and we all thought we'd be ice fishing by now, but there simply is no ice. So what do you do in the UP winter when you can't go ice fishing? I hooked up with Kattashack fly fishing guide Chris Guestwicky and friends for a day on the open water. We're on the Manistique River today and we are fishing for Lake Run Browns, Steelhead, and we've still got some cohos bouncing around. And on tonight's Only in the UP segment, a trip to Christmas to find out if Santa Claus actually lives right here in the UP. How do we know that you're the real deal? The real deal? That's all tonight, right here on Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan Chris emailed me and asked if I wanted to film some December fly fishing, I'll admit I had to think twice about it. The thought of standing in near freezing water in the middle of a river all day is not something you would typically find on my December calendar. But for Chris and his fly fishing buddies Eric and Adam, December is just another month on the calendar. While the rest of us are looking for enough ice to walk on, they are looking for open water. The flies change and the clothing changes. But for them, warm or cold, summer or winter, it's a fisherman a fish, and a fly rod in between. Because we're on the Manistique River today, I've got a couple of buddies along with me that uh, they are real good sticks on this river. This little group has been fishing together for between five and ten years, all depending on which one you look at. But we're on the Manistique River today and we're fishing for Lake Run Browns, Steelhead, and we've still got some cohos bouncing around. So we're going to fish a couple of different techniques today. We're going to do some indicator fishing, um, some bobber fishing with wax worms, and normally I would get into a little bit of swinging flies, but we just don't have the flow in the upper river. So you're gonna see two styles today, and we'll explain that to you in a little bit. So just sit back, enjoy it, and know this is what you do in the winter time when you can't ice fish. You've got multiple currents here. You can see the flow coming off the break wall, and then you've got this flow we're standing right in. It creates kind of a trough right down the middle here where the water gets more relaxed. And those fish, they want to hide in that kind of stuff where they don't have to constantly fight the current. When they're fighting the current, they're spending energy. When it gets cold like this, they don't want to spend any energy. You know, they have to survive. So anytime you can find on whatever river system you're fishing in the winter time, you want to find the spot where the current breaks. That's where they'll be laying.
You know, this right here is one of the common systems that we use when indicator fishing. Typically, you want to put your indicator up about one and a half to two and a half times the depth of the water. Then you put a couple split shot on it. It gets the fly down. But this is a spay bugger that's been transformed. And you can actually go on my website and see that. And then I'm fishing a black stone fly behind it with one shot in the middle. So it gets them down and it gets them deep right in the fish's face. But these flies, they create mass. They look really big when they're in the water. And as I said, these fish are looking for a big ball of protein. They're looking for something to eat without spending a lot of energy. So we're bottom bouncing. We're ticking right across the bottom. And then you just watch that little indicator. And let's be real, it's a bobber. But if that little thing dips under, the slightest bit, give it a quick snap. Because even though these fish are big, their takes can be very subtle. The one thing when you're bottom bouncing, if you're not getting snagged once in a while, you're not where you need to be. You need to lose a fly once in a while and you need to get hung up. If you're not, you're not in the strike zone with this technique. Nice fish. There you go. You hold this. Oh, big brown. Big brown. Oh! Oh! Look at that. That uh, spay bug you tied up. That's that spay bug. Oh my gosh. Is that a brown? That is just a little fire today. You all have to stick with him. Oh. Look at that. That's what this is all about. Mwah. Give me a kiss, baby. That's what this is all about, right there. Gone in an instant. One of the key things you're doing when you're doing this style of fishing, which is called indicator fishing, your bottom bouncing is what you're doing, is to maintain a drag-free drift. Your eggs or your nymphs, whatever it is that you're using, they're ticking right across the bottom. And the reason we're fishing that way, this water temperature is in the high 30s to mid 30s. These fish don't want to move a lot. So they want a good presentation brought down to them right in their face. They want to be able to get the most food they could get without expending energy because it's cold. It's real cold. So you want a good drag-free drift. Now, when you're bringing it right down in front of them, the take, unlike a swung fly, will be very subtle. So you watch that indicator and any dip it makes you set the hook. 
Now with the split shot on it and dragging the bottom, you're gonna get a lot of, I'll call false take, where it's not actually a fish, it's just the bottom. But you don't wanna get caught sleeping. I don't wanna set it. That's the one time that the big silver bullet's on the other end. Try got him over here. One of the most important things is having with these big fish a good net man, somebody that can work with you. This isn't your daddy's, uh, whoa, that's not your daddy's brook trout, that's for sure. There we go. Ah. Big fish. Don't miss the Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. Four days of great bluegrass, country, folk, blues, and rock and roll. Over 25 bands, fun for the entire family. Carry-ins, welcome kids 12 and under free. Buy your tickets and campsites and find out everything you need to know online at woodtickfestival.com. That's woodtickfestival.com. The Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. using fly fly fishing gear out there here we're using a float setup where a clear clear float not to so they don't spook them and then uh, I've got a swivel down to four or six pound test and then a jig head tipped with some wax worms this particular jig head has uh, an egg pattern on it so it almost looks like an egg that's rotting and then we have a, a floating line this is a P line. It stays on top of the surface so you can mend it. And then just a, a 10 foot rod, 10, I think he's using a 13 foot. And this is good for deep holes and uh, deep slow water. You get a nice uh, drag free drift through it. So, yeah, that is a nice um, fish there. We're fishing edges of structure. There's yeah. some structure line here. Um, and uh, usually they'll start taking on uh, attributes of brook trout and, and river trout. So they'll find structure to hide behind. and and breaks in current. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're drifting the edge of the structure right here. One thing I like about the Manistique, it's a really diverse river. Um, starting in about uh, late August, early September, you get your run of kings and pinks entering the river system. That draws a lot of anglers. You know, there's not many places around where you can catch a large king inside of a river in the UP. And then you get some pink salmon coming in, followed by some browns. Uh, 
this year we have the coal hole. Uh, they were planted here two years ago by the DNR, and they returned successfully. The steel are to kind of intermix October through January. You know, they're just following the other fish into the river, trying to gobble up some of those eggs. And some of them stay, some of them leave. You know, there's a few that stick around all winter long. And then uh, through the winter, it slows down quite a bit when stuff, uh, you know, when water starts getting cold and freezes over. But once the spring thaw occurs, then you get steelhead entering the system again. And uh, pretty much I'll start fishing, I'll fish steelhead all fall, winter, spring. And But as soon as it's time for the boat to come out, I drop the waders and grab my boat. Nice That's another nice thing about town is uh, you can almost launch your boat in uh, the Port of Manistique year round. Um, minus a few cold days where the river freezes, the launch ice is up, but we actually start walleye fishing before walleye season closes out of the boat here. Early March, you know, guys are out in Indian Lake, Little Bait and Ock, driving their trucks out ice fishing, and we'll launch our boats here and troll around for walleye. There's a little bit of a walleye population here. Of course, the town's mainly known for its king salmon fishing, this big lake trolling, you know, from Sishwa Point to Manistique to Fairport. You know, this is the hot spot in the UP for kings, salmon and browns. And, uh, you know, that's what draws most of the people to the town. Um, I salmon fish quite a bit myself, mostly out of Manistique. Um, I do go to the Sichua and Fairport a few trips a year, but it's a fun place to fish. There's lots of things you can do, lots of uh, diversity. That's what's fun about this river. I mean, right now in the river system, you know, there's walleye, coho, kings, steelhead, brown trout. I believe we've caught... Uh, three of those species today and uh, there's a few others fish roaming around too but really fun place to fish there you go one more fish that's another nice one yeah he's ready to start egging too. yeah she got a big belly on her. her belly she's gonna put a lot of young ones in here Time for Only in the UP, the segment of the show that highlights the friendly, creative, crafty, and inventive spirit of those of us who live here. It's about that stuff that makes the UP the greatest place on earth to live. Hey everybody, Merry Christmas. Where better to be for the Christmas Eve edition of Only in the UP than Christmas, Michigan? The village of Christmas is located a few miles west of Munising on M28. The town was given its name by a Munising man in 1938 who started a roadside factory to make holiday gifts. The factory is long gone, but the name stuck. Is this the actual North Pole? Could this be the actual home of Santa Claus? I paid a visit to Santa's workshop to find out. We live in Christmas, Michigan, and I have a Christmas store. We have ornaments, uh, little items, stocking stuffers, things that are made by a lot of local people. We have a gentleman here that uh, makes these little jewelry boxes. He's uh, right here in um, All Train. This lighthouse is made by a lady right here in Christmas. And candle, this one is made by a um, gentleman right here, Munising. The birds themselves are carved out of cedar, and he does birds that are just native to the Upper Peninsula. Uh, he lives over in the uh, Marquette area, made right here in the UP. They keep, they're really warm. My grandson has one, and he wears it all the time. It's, it's really warm. So I do cancel cards and letters, and they're postmarked from Christmas and I get them from all over Michigan usually. Sometimes other states will send them to me because they want them postmarked, you know, from Christmas. Firstly, how do we know that you're the real deal? The real deal? Well, you ask around. There are quite a few people that will agree with you that I am the real deal. Were you born and raised in the Upper Peninsula or is this the North Pole? No, I actually moved to the Upper Peninsula where the North Pole was at. Why did you pick the Upper Peninsula? I love the people up here. Self-reliant, hard-working, and fun to be around. So, where do you keep your reindeer? No, I'm not going to tell anybody where I keep my reindeer. <laughs> That's a secret. <laughs> do you ever uh, do you do you ever worry about them a little bit when deer season rolls around in the Upper Peninsula? I've got them well hid. I, I'm not going to tell anybody where they're at because. <laughs> They have horns on it. This bucks only. What up would here. be the what would be the nicest rack of the of the crew? I'd have to say Donner's got the biggest rack. Any, any idea what kind of spread? 
Ah, uh, it runs about 27, 28 inches on the inside. It, it nice. would be a trophy buck for some of these here well, white-tailed deer hunters. Definitely. In, in regards to your sleigh, is there a, a local shop, like a snowmobile shop, or a local shop that maintains your sleigh here and keeps it up to up to par? Or do you do that yourself? I do that myself. You do that stuff it, yourself. It's a pretty sophisticated flying regime. Any know. idea what year that sleigh is? A certain model number or anything, or there been any upgrades to it? Or well, it's had a few upgrades on it, but it's still the old model one. So would this be a fairly good representation of the sleigh? Is that somewhat yeah, of a replica? Yeah, well, it's kind of like it, but my sleigh has got a big basket back here where I keep my toys. Uh, I mean, this is just for setting. This is more or less the sleigh I use when I'm breaking into my reindeer, things exactly, like that. Exactly. You, know, that you ever get up and just like cruise around when it's not Christmas? Yeah, in fact, I got a nice place out here. I can cruise around over the lake and nobody oh, knows me. Nice. Maybe a sailor or two now and then sure. might see something strange flying around. But. Maybe a long night of riding in the sleigh. You ever a little uh, while you're riding, driving a sleigh? I mean, the reindeer are driving. Does Mrs. Claus give you the typical honeydew list like everybody else gets? Or do you kind of get excluded from that because you're Santa? You think your honeydew list is long? Do reindeer yard up like deer do? Uh, How many does do you keep on, on hand at any given time? Uh, you have to be about three to one. Three to one buck to doe ratio? Right. Do to buck. I imagine it would pretty much be the same as what the DNR would like to see in their deer herds. So what would I put in a bait pile if I was trying to attract reindeer? Uh, they like uh, little like wintergreen berries and you're not out here to get my <laughs> come on now do you actually like milk and cookies yes i do you do oatmeal raisin cookies are uh, my favorite that's i don't know if they can know of that so do you stay here year round or in summertime do you fly down somewhere on vacation in in, uh, in florida or something no no i this is as far south as i care to be i mean everything south of here is i mean it's too warm my reindeer wouldn't survive down there. I got to be back where I can check on them. And uh, UP and the, we have, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place to be. Okay, I need a new video camera. Well, that's it for tonight. Thank you very much for watching. My wife Patty and I would like to wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas. I got a rifle I got my eye on for a hunting rifle with a scope.